Hey everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. Have another Pastor Jerry Jacobson message for you. The Here to See channel focused on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the difficult, and instructions for a better life. Submit to God and resist the devil, says Pastor Jerry Jacobson. Reference Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 and 1 Peter 5 5 to 11. Like and subscribe. You can see these and other great videos. Now listen up and learn. Hey there folks, how you doing? You know it's been 80, almost 90 degrees here in Mississippi today and that's pretty warm. But there's a place that's going to be a lot warmer than that that's coming around for a lot of people. Do you realize that God spoke to Noah and said to Noah, Noah, I want you to do something for me. Build an ark and put two of each animals in it and seven of the clean ones so we can sacrifice them and, and uh, put your sons on the ark and your wives and their wives on the ark and I'm going to I'm going to destroy the population. They've got their bloodline mixed up with the Satan, and they've got they've been breeding with demons, and and uh, they've got big troubles. And I've got to get rid of them, or they'll mess up the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And the Savior, uh, it won't work out right. I've got to do this. So he did. And do you realize there were only eight people that lived after the flood? Eight people out of must have been three or four million, and they all went because God thought it was necessary for them to go. I want to read you two portions of scripture one from Hebrews and one from uh, Peter. Uh, Hebrews 11 6, and it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, listen to this now, he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then First Peter, the fifth chapter, I'm going to read several verses there because I think it's real important. I'm going to start in verse 5, chapter 5, verse 5, First Peter. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. You know, he walks about like a roaring lion. He doesn't have any power to the Christians. He's a phony. He has to walk about like a roaring lion, because he's not a roaring lion. He's a phony. He's a defeated foe. God defeated him at the cross when he sent his son to the cross to pay for my sins and yours. Do you know that your sins are already paid for? Even though you're a rotten heathen and you've been living in sin, deep sin, that your sins have already been paid for and all you have to do is ask God and he'll forgive your sins, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. See, he has to... He can only devour people that will let him. He can't devour you if you don't let him. You've got to open it up and say, okay, go ahead, take advantage. You've got to do it. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. This is, this is so wonderful. May God, the God of all grace, who called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus, 
after you have refer suffered for a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do you, did you hear that? With First, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're being a nice guy isn't going to get you there. It's got to be your faith in Jesus Christ. And, and if your faith is locked in Jesus Christ, you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. God loves you. He loves you anyway, but he loves you. And I want to talk a little bit about how much God wants to have fellowship with us. You know that God sent his church into the world to reach the lost. And because we don't have enough fellowship with God, many people never been anybody to Jesus. Many people just walk around and say, I'm a Christian. And the only way you know they're a Christian is because they tell you. And that happens a lot. But God wants us. He, in every one of the Gospels, he put a great commission. He put a commission for you and for me to go into all the world and win people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to, that's what the church is supposed to do. Win people. Remember in Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He was talking to that church there, but he's standing at the door of people's hearts and knocking, waiting for them to respond so he can come in and forgive their sins and be their Savior and Lord. God loves us. God cares about us. I remember when I was a little kid, just an ordinary little kid, about seven or eight years old, and I'd walk three miles every day out to the river and go fishing by myself. Take my fish pole and my dog if he wanted to go along, and walk three, every day I'd walk out there and then I'd walk back. And sometimes somebody would give you the ride, but generally they didn't give you a ride, they made you walk. And they knew I was just a little guy, and they made me walk anyway. And I'm glad they did, because I love to walk, and I do a lot of walking. And I'm in my 90th year now, and I'm still walking. And I think it had something to do with that, my walking so much then. But listen to me. God wants to have fellowship with us that is intimate and warm. Do I know God as well as I should? Absolutely not. I should know him better than I do after loving him all these years, but I haven't loved him enough to study more, to pray more, to be filled with the Holy Spirit more. I've just done it enough to satisfy Jerry Jacobson. I don't know if it's quite that bad, but it's in that vicinity. But do you hear me? God wants us to know him. He wants us to fellow. Do you realize he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and then in the cool of the night, he'd come down into the Garden of Eden and fellowship with them. He wants to fellowship with you and me. He wants to, he wants to say, hi there, my son or daughter, because you're important to God. Listen to me. Have Jesus Christ come into your life and be your Savior. So you can be all you can't be all you can be unless you have Jesus in your life. There's so much we've got to look forward to if we'll have Jesus as our Savior. If we don't have Him as our Savior, we don't have any. We're going to hell. We're going to die and go and burn in hell with Satan for eternity. Yeah, may, there may be some of you will disagree with me a little bit there, but that's where we can disagree. We're Christians. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. But listen to me. God wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to take in his arm and say, there you are. <laughs> I love it when God gets close to me and gives me a big hug. When I was on my, I think it was my 87th birthday, I heard a voice when I got out of bed. I get up about 4.30, quarter to 5 in the morning. Got up out of bed and heard a voice say, Happy birthday, Jay! <laughs> Before I'd even thought about it, somebody from heaven, one of the angels, or it may have been the Holy Spirit, may have been Jesus, may have been the Father, somebody wished Jerry Jacobson 
happy birthday on their 87th birthday. I thought that was so wonderful. I've told hundreds of people that, I believe. I, that, that was so satisfying to me. But God wants to have fellowship with us. Have fellowship with him. It's up to you. It's not up to him. Call on him. Call on him now and he'll come into your life. Thank you for talking with me. Bye-bye.